Hello community! If you want to build a recommender system, for example, you have a lot of data, you have a lot of graph data, and your task is now, how can you put those graph data in a form, in a representation, that you can use graph machine learning on it? So you have a graph representation topic. As you know, with a graph we have nodes and we have edges. And with the node, the information of the node is uh, stored in, in a feature tensor, in a feature vector. And then the topological or the graph structure itself, we have an adjacency matrix and the node information is in a feature tensor. Beautiful. Now, how do we do this in graph machine learning? And the topic I will show you is how to, how to build your computational graph. So let's start at the beginning. Machine learning, graph machine learning, calculates node embeddings, full stop. Node embeddings for all of our nodes in our graph, and those nodes embeddings are vectors, as you know them, in a vector space. Great, this is it. And a GNN layer, this is the simplest object in a graph machine learning task, is a layer, for example, for a recommender system, has a simple task. You take a set of vectors, you combine those vectors in a specific way, and you build a new single vector, which has a new information. Great. So we do this. Well, again, we have the structural information of the graph in our adjacency tensor, and we have the node feature tensors. So first step is we take the node embeddings of a neighborhood of a specific central node, those node embeddings of the neighborhood are the input to our graph neural network layer. And this layer computes a new node embedding for this specific node. So we integrate the neighborhood information into the node embedding at the next step. So let's view this in this short image. Most important, our red node N0 right here in the middle. Beautiful. Now, if you go one hop from N0, you can go to N1, N0 to N2, and N0 to N3. This is it. Every other node, you need one, two hops away. So, we say our one hop distance, our one hop area, neighborhood, is this red circle. And to reach the yellow nodes, you have to have a two hop structure. So, we call it a one hop neighborhood with the three nodes surrounding the red node and the two-hop neighborhood. Beautiful. How we do this now in graph machine learning? As I told you, we will apply a very specific functionality and an object that has a structure that every node in our specific area sends out a message along an edge. All those messages, when they arrive at a new node, are aggregated with a specific function, and this allows to calculate a new node embedding of this particular node. We can, can create a new vector representation of this, integrating all the information of the one-hop neighborhood graph environment. Let's do this. Okay, first, what is H? H is a node embedding. So the node embedding of node V is H of V. Congratulations. Let's start with the message generation. Each node will create a message, and each node sends out this along our edges. Beautiful. How is this done? Well, we have uh, at the very first step, the, the configurational step here, we have a node embedding of a node u at a layer minus one. And we have a message function that we apply on this node embedding. Whatever this message function is, in the simplest case for a linear layer, you know what it is. It is a matrix multiplication with the weight matrix. So you see here the terms suddenly becomes, our message becomes here, matrix multiplication with a weight matrix. Beautiful. What we created is a new message. This is our new message function that we created. Now, next up, we send those messages along the edges here to the aggregation. 
So you see here in blue, we have our message from the node one, another one from here, and another one from here. And they meet over here, the message aggregation center. Now what they do? Easy, they aggregate it. Whatever the function is, we, we will look at them in detail a little bit later. We have an aggregation function of all our incoming messages, u, where u is an element in the neighborhood of v. So v is our red node, and in the neighborhood we have n1, n2, and n3. So we have three incoming messages. We aggregate them. Let's say we take the summation, the mean, min, max, aggregator, whatever, and we have a result of a new node embedding of our node V, this red node, N0, now taking into consideration the graph information of its closest neighborhood. So this is done in the first GNN layer. This is exactly what's happening in a GNN layer. Now, if you want to be specific, and you say, okay, but maybe this node itself has also as an initial condition some valuable information. Easy, just concatenate it to our uh, term. Exactly what we do. Here, h of v is exactly our aggregation. This is exactly this term here. This is the yellow term here. And then we concatenate this term one with the node itself, uh, m of v. Beautiful. So. This is done. We have now the new node embedding of our N0 node. This opens up a door. This formalism gives us access to three different GNNs, minimum. You have the graph convolutional network, you have the message passing graph sage, and you have the graph attention network. So here we go. Of course, always go to the original source. And the original source here of, of Graph Sage was uh, uh, with Hamilton, uh, Professor Jurelis Kovic. Stanford University Lecture 7.2, available on the internet, on YouTube, free of charge. Look at it, it's amazing. Takes some hours, but it's great. So, you know the GCN formula. This is it with this normalization by node degree. And now you say, hey, can we understand this formula? just coming from our theoretical approach of message generation and message aggregation. Yes, very easily. You just take the, the weight matrix, you put it within the summation, and then here in red, you have the message generation functionality, and the aggregation functionality is here just the summation. So you see, with a summation as an aggregation function and a normalization by node degree, this is a graph convolutional network. Amazing, isn't it? Now, second, GraphSage. GraphSage is a framework for representational learning. I showed you in my very first slide. We have the graph data. We want to have a computational graph for GraphML. So we have to learn some representation of our data for large graph, and we want to have them inductive. What does it mean? If you add new data, you do not have to calculate the whole graph again, but if you add some nodes, you add some edges, beautiful. With GraphSage, leverages node attribution information to efficiently generate representation of previously unseen data. Gorgeous. If you want to have a deep dive, this is the original publication on the archive server from Hamilton, Yink, and Liskovich. Have a look at this, it's beautiful. GraphSage now. How can we rewrite this classical graph sage formalism now in our message generation and message aggregation idea? Okay, the message is computed within the aggregation function. We have just seen this before. Now we have a two-stage aggregation. At first, we have a term that we aggregate from the node neighbors, classical. You know this. But have a look, this is exactly what we have here as the second concatenation term in our graph sage formula. So we aggregate the node, the node neighbor from the node neighbors, all our messages, and then we just take this term and we have a concatenation of this term here with a new term. And this is just not a new term, but this is the node itself. So as I showed you before, you concatenate them, the node itself, and the aggregation from the neighbors. You multiply this concatenation with 
the matrix multiplication with the weight matrix or weight tensors or whatever, and with a discontinuity, with ReLU or whatever you have as a function, and you achieved your goal to understand this in our formalism. Of course, the aggregation form uh, function here, you have a lot of aggregation function available. Choose them according to your specific task. And also be careful, sometimes you can have an improvement of your model if you do a normalization. Now, optional is this L2 normalization to every node embedding at every layer. And, but what you achieve with the normalization, like always, you achieved it. More or less, all vectors have the same length, and with L2, you know the length is 1. So, this can help you significantly in compute time. Now, the third topic of GNN is graph attention networks. The third flavor, if you want, of this GNN is attention mechanism. And if you look at a classical GAT formula, you see here this famous attention weights. And you say, what are attention weights? Well, easy. If you think about in graph convolution network and in graph sage, all neighbors are equally important, contributing equally to the new node embedding, to the calculation of the new node embedding. Not anymore here in graph attention network. Attention tells you, hey, we we look out for specific tasks. We have some specific attention on some strong neighbors, on some strong nodes. And there are other nodes that are maybe not so important. We will give less attention weights to these smaller, weaker nodes. So there's a whole complex mathematics behind attention weight, how you can calculate them, how to optimize them. But this is not a point here. Just wanted to show you. Graph neural network layers in our three flavors of GCN, Graph, Sage, or GAT, it, there is a simple, single mechanism to, to enabling us to understand it. And just to show you here, the nodes, you know, those are the little spheres here. In a graph neural network layer, you have this calculation, message passing, message aggregation along the edges. And if you stack now two layers together, well, it's easy. They do exactly the same, more or less. You just increase the complexity. So you have here three nodes, and to each and every of those three nodes, you have here the self-identical objects that we apply. And of course, you can have a GNN layer number three. If you want to go a one hop, two hop, a three hop, again, uh, away from your central node, no problem at all. Then you attach these objects to each and every of those nodes, and you can see the computational complexity to do this in a full stack increases significantly. It makes it almost uncomputable. Now, with GraphSage neighbor sampling, there is a beautiful solution to this topic of, of GPU memory. If you have graphs with millions of nodes or millions of edges. Now, um, the computational graph is constructed for each node. Why, how is this possible that we just construct it for each node? Well, think about it. The computational graph can be subsampled because if we compute only the, let's say, two hop neighborhood of a single node, we can ignore the rest. But our formula showed us this is possible. Because this is exactly what we have done with the two GNN layers. We have all two hop away neighborhoods and all the nodes in these two hop neighborhoods. So for each single node in our complete graph, we only have a two hop neighborhood calculation and we ignore everything else of our graph. And then, since we do it only on, on each node, on a single node, this is easy. Now you can subsample, you can split it up to generate the new, better node embeddings, the improved node embeddings on the next layer. So, let's say we have 23 different nodes in our graph. Then, we just compute 23 computational subsample uh, graphs, and they fit each of them very easily in a GPU memory. So, what we achieved, we have now an uh, idea we say, okay, only two hop neighborhoods are important for our calculation. Or if you have three layers, three hop neighborhoods, but four and five hop neighborhoods, we, we've ignored, we forget it. 
the complexity would be uncalculatable. So great. But you know what? Even with this trick, let's call it, with this simplification, if you have a high dimensional graph, my goodness, you can't almost compute it. So another simplification is necessary. The sampling strategy, the sampling technology we're going to apply. We play around now. Easy, we just say, hey, we can just afford two neighbors for each hop. But you say, hey, what do you mean, two neighbors? You can't just cross out here the third node here. No? But yeah, this is exactly what people proposed, and it's working. So we are here in GraphSage neighbor sampling with h equals 2. So we have just here two nodes. And in each and every of the graph computational uh, objects, we have only two nodes. So every third node, we just cross it out, we cross it out. And you see here the third node and the whole subgraph here, we just cross it out. And you might say, hey, we lose all this information. We, we lose here the structural information of this branch here. Maybe there's some valuable information. But yeah, we lose it. In order to achieve the goal to compute it, to make it computable, we lose this information of this, this, this part of the graph. This is the way to do it. And of course, you might say, but wait, if I have to cross out a node, can I choose a node that is not so important, like in the GAT? Well, of course. And here we have a methodology, it's called random walks with restart to choose the most important nodes. And the idea is easy. You have here your central node N0. And if you have here just an isolated green node, this little fellow here, who is not connected at all, who has no other information, you are now here asked, hey, do you want to cross out this node? Or you want to cross out, make two hops and cross out this node? But this node has a lot of uh, connectivity to other nodes. There's a lot of uh, node feature tensors, maybe in the information on the nodes, that you would need for your graph for graph machine learning on this. So, of course, you would argue, okay, I forget about this isolated little node, and I take this one, and maybe I take this one in the first step. So you see, you can choose the specific nodes when you have to cross out that you try, you, you imagine you cross out the one who has not so valuable information, but you can't be sure beforehand. So you have to do it, you have to try it out. So I say thank you. This was a very short introduction on the theory of graph sage from the general theory of graph neural networks. I showed you that we have a common understanding on graph convolution network, uh, message passing, graph sage, and graph attention networks. And this formula enables us to understand all three flavors of graph neural networks. And in the next video, I will show you. When we apply in code GraphSage to build a link prediction model for a recommender system, how we can do this now that we have understood exactly what GraphSage is doing to our network. I say thank you for listening, for watching, and I see you in the next video.